I'm Ben Christie, Aviation Curator for the National Museum of the Marine Corps. In this Marine Museum Minute, I'll be speaking about the Curtis JN-4 primary trainer. First ordered as an observation airplane by the United States Army, this airplane found fame in World War I as a primary trainer used by the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps to train fledgling pilots for combat in, in France. Actually referred to as the Jenny, the Curtis JN-4 was known as an honest airplane. Slow, rugged, simple, generally unmaneuverable, and somewhat forgiving of student pilots. Thousands were built during the war by several different companies, and it's believed that 95% of all military pilots trained in North America, both American and Canadian, flew Jennies at some point during their training. The Marine Corps operated three different models of the Jenny during World War I, mostly from the Marine Flying Field located outside Miami, Florida. It was here that the four squadrons that made up the 1st Marine Aviation Force, which saw combat in France, were trained. In 1918, the U.S. Navy ordered 30 examples of the JN-4H from, from the Curtis Aircraft Corporation of Buffalo, New York. The H in the designation stands for Wright Hispano, the engine manufacturer. The HISO, as this engine was known, generated 150 horsepower and was a great improvement over the 90 horsepower engines that the earlier Navy Jennies utilized. The Navy ordered a further 90 examples of the JN-4HG, a standard JN-4H aircraft fitted with a rear-mounted light machine gun so that Navy and Marine Corps gunner observers could be trained in aerial gunnery. A few Marine Corps JN-4HGs did see frontline service in Haiti and the Dominican Republic starting in 1919. There, the Marine Jennies carried mail, passengers, transported supplies, and helped, helped to map the islands. Additionally, they were used to attack enemy bandits, as the indigenous irregular forces at the time were called. And it was during these operations that Marine pilot Lieutenant Lawson Sanderson began to experiment with dive bombing to improve accuracy. While Sanderson did not invent dive bombing, his efforts were the first step to creating the system of close air support that marine aviation has excelled at since World War II. The museum's aircraft, Bureau Number A-4160, was accepted by the U.S. Navy from Curtis in June 1918. The Marine Corps received the aircraft at the Miami Flying Field on 9 July 1918. One year later, with World War I over, the Marine Flying Field in Florida was closed and the aircraft was transferred here to Quantico, perhaps for overhaul and repair from the damage sustained while flying at Miami. A4160 was one of approximately 45 Curtis Jennies of different models that the Marines operated here at Quantico between 1919 and 1926. In August 1919, this aircraft was shipped across the country to the Marine Flying Field at North Island, California, near San Diego. However, by November 1920, the Marine Corps determined the aircraft was in poor condition and recommended to the Navy that it, be, that it be disposed of or stricken. The aircraft was sold as scrap but was repaired and used as a crop duster for a period of time. Passing through several different owners, it was finally purchased by noted World War I aircraft restorer Mr. Howard Wells, who found the airplane in a barn in California. Wells approached the Marine Corps Museum and offered to restore the aircraft as part of a trade exchange agreement in, in 1990. This aircraft, now fully restored, arrived back at Quantico, 75 years nearly to the day that it was originally stricken from Navy service. And it, was a, it is a proud reminder of early Marine Corps aviation and the contributions that Marine aviation made to World War I. If you'd like to learn more about Marine aviation or Marine aviation as a whole, please come visit us here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps.